Howdy boys and girls, it's Uncle Willie. It is a nasty wet. It's not raining anymore, but my yard's a swamp. And let's talk about tilt trailers a little bit. And somebody asked me what I like about my big tilt trailer. So, several years ago, I think about four years ago, I bought this tilt trailer. And it is a manual tilt which means you have to jack this thing up and each pump of the handle, this is a, actually the ram for a, uh, a Harbor Freight uh, uh, engine hoist. Every pump of the handle is an eighth inch of lift on the ram, so it takes approximately nine and a half years to get this thing lifted up. But it was the first tilt trader I ever bought, so I didn't, didn't know any better at the time. Uh, the previous owner installed the winch, and that's a really hilarious thing because the bolts on that are almost a foot long. They, <laughs> they go all the way down through the frame. One of the things I never liked is the way this is stitched instead of welded all the way across. And that would be fine if you were always loading cars that always rolled. Some of the cars we hauled don't have tires on them, so you're dragging them up on the frame and that little gap right there will grab a car and not let go of it. The other thing I really don't like about this trailer, the D-rings, the tie-down points are in the middle. The problem with that is when you pull a car that doesn't have any tires on it, they hang on it. And the other thing I don't like about this one is the way the back of the trailer is made. It sticks out. And in theory, it gets pretty close to the ground. But when it's, when that part of the frame right there, whoop, right there, I'm looking at my hand, not the camera. When that part of the frame is touching the ground, there's about an inch, inch and a half lip. And that's really hard to get a car over sometimes. So this is our backup trailer. And it did have fenders and they got tragically destroyed in a horrible accident that left 73 dead kittens and four dead nuns. It was horrible. And the one thing I do like about this trailer that the other one doesn't have is this locking pin right here. You lower it, you put this pin in it, and the deck can't come back up again. Now we come over to the second tilt trailer I bought. See all this is a 2020 striker trailer and it has a little boy and a car on it. And it's yeah, yeah, pretty decent. It was painted with the world's cheapest paint and it came with the world's garbage tires. They are horrible. Um, they're, I bought this trailer in August and I've got to replace the tires already. They are, they are wore out. But then we pull this thing every single day just about. So it's got in this here and it did not have that cable on it when I bought it so when you open it up the door would flop back against the back of the truck you got your remote and it goes power up and the biggest thing I dislike about this trailer is it is gravity down And what's so bad about having gravity going down? Well, the issue is this. If you've got a full-size pickup truck and you have to load that full-size pickup truck backwards, there's so much weight on the back end of the trailer that you can't lower the bed. You have to have weight. And you see that pivot point right there? That's where the whole trailer pivots. If you don't have the engine of the car very close to that pivot point, it will not go down all the way. And that gets to be a problem because we've had to actually do all kinds of jockeying to turn a truck around to get it loaded. It did have very flimsy tail light covers. That's really sad that that dent happened. And my biggest gripe about this trailer is this. While it goes all the way down to the ground, and this piece of steel actually touches the ground, it is so flimsy that if I kicked it hard enough, I could bend it. There's literally no support under that piece of steel. And you see it's, it's dented. That right there happened, kind of hard to tell. 
uh, you see the little dents in it that happens every single time there's a rock or an uneven place on the ground it dents the back of the trailer they should have put some kind of reinforcement a quarter inch piece of steel across the back would have solved all that and like the other one this one is not fully welded it's got a little weld here and a weld in the middle and you can already see where things have caught and bent the trailer because that is not fully welded and they hang in those little grooves so if i ever ordered another trailer number one it would be at least 20 feet this one's 18 which is not bad but when we put the extra cab long bed f-250 up here the back tires were sitting about right there which <laughs> so if it was any longer it wouldn't go um i'd get a 20 footer at least i do like the fact that the tie downs are outboard on the trailer there's just not enough of them and if i ever custom order one it'll have more tie down points it will also have fully welded seams everywhere um and they'll have more support. This one is just, it's not very well built for this. And, uh, you know, you live and learn. There's some other companies I have found that make them that should be better. It does not have removable fenders. That is and isn't a problem. This is in the world's worst location because we actually disassemble the cars on the trailer. And you can tell you can't take that tire off. Because that's in the way i would move that to the front up here somewhere somehow um there was no provision to mount a winch on this trailer so we drilled through the deck there is a three eighths piece of steel bolted to the bottom of the deck that that goes through to keep the winch from pulling through and by the way if you're going to haul cars this synthetic cable is the way to go because if you break a steel cable it will cut your head off if you break a synthetic cable it just falls on the ground and yes it has to be replaced every couple of years and this one's about due for replacement but i'd rather replace a steel cable than have to replace someone's arm when it gets cut off when the cable breaks that's just me um and by the way the harbor freight winches i have broken every brand of winch uh smitty built worn mile marker uh Ramsey, you name it, we have broken them. I mean, broken them literally in half. This thing has pulled stuff it should not have pulled. Uh, and it just, it just does it. The, uh, I did break one of these because we had a car that didn't have brakes on it. And it rolled all the way up and hit the winch. Uh, and that's the only way I've broken one of these Harbor Freight winches. Uh, and I know people say they burned the motors out and had to get them replaced. But th that one right there... I got it second hand and we've pulled everything in the world with it but uh i would have a winch mount preferably where i could remove the winch because there's places that i go that i sometimes wonder if my winch is still going to be there when i get back literally i had somebody steal the battery out of a trailer once at a uh at a restaurant um but it rides good the, it rides good now that I've balanced the tires on it. It was terrible. And I didn't notice it behind the other Suburban, but behind this one, it bounced. It actually vibrated the dash panel loose on the truck. It, the, the whole dash fell out of the truck because of the vibration when this thing's empty. We put balance beads in the tires and fixed it, but that's how bad those tires are. They weren't like that when I got the trailer, but over the months of pulling stuff, the tires have just fallen apart. Um... It does have brakes on both axles, and it'll stop the truck, no problems. Uh, but yeah, I would fully weld the seams, and if you're going to haul junk cars or a race car that might be wrecked and missing a tire, don't get a wooden deck, because when you pull something up on a wooden deck, if there's anything hanging down, it digs in and it won't go any further. That's why rollbacks don't have wooden decks on their uh on their beds they have steel or aluminum so things slide on it but uh fully weld your seams 
make it more than long enough for whatever you're going to tow and make it power down because that that gravity down is just not working for us on some things i think it's really interesting when you got to take things out and turn them around four times reinforce the back of your trailer because the first time i used this trailer is where this dent right here came from because there was a rock on the ground when i lowered the trailer there's a rock about yay big on a piece of on pavement and it just dented my trailer up but uh i do like it um it's it's been a good trailer if it just had that power down feature and we'll say what's power down well i'll show you this one there's our power up now listen power down and if there's something on the back of this one like you're dumping gravel and only you know you only want half the load out well when you lift the bed to dump half of it out it's all going to slide to the back of the bed if it was a gravity down you could not lower the bed at that point because all the weight would be back there against the tailgate with the power down it'll lower with 10,000 pounds of weight back there or a couple of air conditioners so somebody asked what i would do different with my trailer and there you go uh minor things to be sure but it was thing it, it's thing and yet boy you can really see how messed up the back of that thing is now she's a rocking and rolling and weebling all across there but i'm 95 percent in love with this trailer the other five percent is stuff that had i known it would have been done differently but i didn't know at the time and now I do. And you can look, see how wonderful the welds are. Them kindergarten welds there. Uh, and the trailer's stout. It's, it's not ever offered to move, even when we had a building on it. And the building was bad because we couldn't get it any further forward than we did. And we actually had to strap the front of the trailer down to the frame to keep it from tilting backwards going down the road. So that's what i would do different if i were to buy this trailer again and probably in the next two years i will be replacing it with another one or buy another one and using this one for the backup but um it's been a good trailer we've used the fool out of it it's been to tennessee and back it's towed goodness it's towed suburbans it's towed towed a f250 f250 power stroke truck uh, it's it's hauled some weight but i would just change those few things out because the power down is just it's a deal if i had i known it would have been a deal breaker and i wouldn't have bought it so get you a power down on yours always have a steel deck fully weld your steel deck because those little gaps are just a pain in the butt to deal with um, reinforce your dovetail back there so that you're not tearing it up every time you raise it and lower it and make sure it's longer than you need because i never would have thought that an 18 footer would not be long enough for me but um it is hey look at there it's kit kat it, it definitely is too short for some of the things we do so that's my opinion my take on the dump trailer and uh i'm gonna get out of the mud because it's just nasty out here bye